Before we get started on today's episode, I want to give you a really quick update on something that I had in a previous episode, and that was installing an oil catch can. And I want to make a revision to what I had said in my video. You'll notice now that I have this port plugged. So you don't need to get a three port model. You only need an input and output model. What you want to do is route your PCV out to the oil catch can in, route your catch can out to your intake manifold in. Over here, off your resonator, I have, you can see I've removed mine, but if you have your resonator installed, you just want to run this, what we call a fresh air port on the bank two valve cover. You just want to connect it here. Let's go ahead and get started on the valve body modification episode, stage two transmission. Let's go. If you're not already a subscriber, be sure to hit that subscribe button. You're probably wondering, what am I doing holding this big, heavy thing? Well, this is a valve body assembly, and it's modified, and it's going into my A650 e transmission on my Lexus GS400. Now, this transmission is shared across multiple platforms, so the instructions in removal and replacement of this valve body assembly are going to be similar. This episode is about taking out the valve body assembly what to do with it, where to send it, and how to get it back in properly. First of all, you're going to need a modified valve body. Six quarts of ATF transmission strainer or filter. The factory service manual. And then assembly grease for transmissions. And I'll show you why you're going to need that. Okay, next you need to remove the seven connectors that are under here and you're gonna get oil on your hands, so I suggest wearing gloves. All you need to do is to push on the connector and gently pull out. Now this one here will have fluid that comes out of it and then what you're gonna do is just kinda continue and get these all unplugged. I'm gonna start removing the bolts from the old valve body, the one that's installed currently. This is the factory service manual. If you happen to get messed up and misplace a bolt or not know where it goes, the factory service manual does outline each bolt size and where it's located. So there's, you can pause the video and take a look at that if, if you're having an issue. Once you get them all loosened like this, it drops down a bit on you. And I started undoing the, the center one and as you can see, the fluid is, is running out. So you wanna make sure you have a pan underneath. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and let this drain for a while, and then I'm gonna come back. I'm not removing them completely yet, because I'm curious to see what happens. Okay, I have 20 out of 21 bolts removed. I left the one in the center in place and what you need to know is that there is a spring and a check valve right up in this location here in the forward passenger side. You do not want to drop and lose those. Just make sure that 
you catch that thing when it comes out. So that's the point I'm at at the moment. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that last bolt. Where's my check valve? I see it. Oh yeah, see the check valve? What was that? Something. Well, at least it's in there. <laughs> okay. Oh, shoot. Oh, those are the key accumulators. So here's some of the parts that fell in. And there are a few more over there under the car. Here's the new valve body right there. And the old one is here in the oil pan. I actually put some paint pen on it right there just so I didn't accidentally put in the old one. I know that sounds silly, but they are exactly the same and it's not like I can tell the difference from the outside. This long bolt is gonna be needed once I'm able to push this thing up under the car and up inside the transmission. So you're gonna to need to fasten it with this long bolt. All the other bolts I left where they belong in the old one so I can slide that over. Now, if you take a look, I had quite the ordeal here with mine when these accumulators dropped out. Uh, I can pretty much guarantee you yours are gonna fall out because you're gonna probably be doing this under the car, which is actually quite the pain. This here is the check valve, and that's the thing that you really wanna be careful about because this spring here is really light. I mean, you lose that and you're in trouble. This job is very tedious. I don't recommend it for those of you who may not have a lot of experience around cars. I recommend, you know, having it done. A trans shop should have no problem whatsoever just dropping your valve body down and it would be even better if you brought them the modified valve body they could go ahead and just throw it right in the line pressure adjustment is on the driver's side this is the dial adjuster right here and it increases the line pressure or decreases the line pressure depending on which way you go you want it to be in the position shown you push that in and turn it clockwise when you push that in and turn it clockwise, it'll go to that third position. That will increase your line pressure. Next step is to get this sucker in. You're gonna need a lot of this assembly grease, transmission assembly grease, to hold these parts up in there because of gravity. I just wanna show you guys how I have everything laid out. I have the new valve body assembly that's gonna go in, and then I have the accumulators and springs and the grease, the assembly grease. Just adding the transmission assembly grease to each side of each spring so that it will stay up inside the transmission as I get the valve body ready. And I put quite a bit on there. gently distributing the clamping force to make sure that I didn't pinch anything in here with the accumulators. So I'm just, just watching how this goes in and making sure I don't cross thread anything. It seems like everything's going in okay. Um, everything's compressing right. I have my old valve body down here where I'm pulling each fastener out and putting it in the spot it needs to go into. The factory service manual calls out for a torque value of seven, seven foot-pounds. So I'm gonna go through all of these and torque them down. Once you think you have them all torqued down, what I suggest is actually as, as dumb as it sounds, count to 21 and start at the bottom and then work your way to 21 and then you'll know if you missed one. There's one I missed, see? 
It's always good to go over things again. Just plug it in the seven connections. All I have to do is just kind of slip it right up in there. It's pretty much impossible to get this wrong. This wire harness guides you. Just make sure everything clicks in. The last thing you need is one of the solenoids not working because you didn't click in the connection and it worked itself loose, right? So just listen for that positive click. There should be seven. Uh, there's one that goes way over here. One more. Right there. I used a Felpro gasket that was provided to me when I bought this valve body. And the filter kit also came with one. And I find that it's easy to run a couple fasteners up through it to keep it aligned. I'm just running them in. You're gonna take a torque wrench and go 65 inch pounds with it. I'm just running them in real easy right now because there's 19 of them. Torque to 65 inch pounds. Okay, all torqued, everything's on. Dipstick is engaged, hard line is engaged. If you did use the FIPG, form in place gasket, there is a setup time. I'm not sure what that is. It doesn't say it in the factory service manual, so you need to double check that. Now, if you used a gasket like I did, especially a fiber one from Felpro, you can actually drive the vehicle right away, which is a huge benefit. I hit five quarts or so into this container and I still have, I'd say half a quart left. So you're gonna need roughly five and a half quarts to do the job. Taking it for a first spin after the valve body modification installation. Coming out of my neighborhood, I noticed it shifted pretty normal so i'm gonna do some normal driving and make sure that everything gets lubricated properly and then maybe i'll start going a little harder with it but i'm kind of scared <laughs> i'm just gonna go half throttle here so you can hear it shift is so much better but I haven't floored it yet kick down seems to be a lot faster too I'll kick it down here a little it's just like instant well feels pretty good felt very very stock driving normally uh, the most notice noticeable change was the two to three shift at high throttle input and the two to three shift definitely you could feel the difference there well, this is a worthwhile upgrade for those of you who are looking to change the demeanor of your vehicle because these transmissions you want it to be sporty if you're not already a subscriber hit that subscribe button i'm going to do more cool videos coming up check out these video clips we'll see you on the next one